Girls of Reddit, what is the one thing about your significant other that you absolutely adore? Story 1. He's really good to my mom. We sold our house and got rid of almost everything we had to move in with my now 87-year-old mom two years ago, who at the time had mild dementia. He treats her like a queen, brings home fresh flowers, her favorite foods, has driven her to annoying things like getting her taxes done and hair and nail appointments. Before we moved in, they would have two to three hour long phone conversations that would make me jealous. Never mind he's super attractive. Never mind he works his ass off. All I know is he loves my mom, and she can be super annoying sometimes. She can't help it. Bless her heart. After her asking what day it is for the 43rd time, he answers her with respect. It is kind and funny to her. He's the man. Story 2. He stared at me while I was watching TV. When I looked over at him, he just smiled even bigger till he got the little crinkles at the corner of his eyes and told me he loved me. Naturally, I am incredibly suspicious and still can't figure out what he's done wrong. We'll update as found. Story 3. At this point, there's very little I don't love about my husband, even his snoring. He recently went on vacation without me and I couldn't sleep at all without his snoring. We have a lot of animals, so we vacation separately. The one thing I love and have always loved since day one is his smell. He's a man of very few words and he's not naturally affectionate. But when he hugs me, it smells like safety and comfort. Even after a long day at work, I love the way he smells. Story 4. When he sleeps, he'll sleep talk about how much he loves me. You can ask him any question and he will answer honestly. He will pull me to him in the middle of the night. He always puts me first and strives to be a better man for me even though he's already a wonderful man. We're in a long distance relationship since he's in the military and he always makes sure he tells me goodnight or calls me when he could get in trouble. He's the love of my life and I miss him. Story 5. When he gets really excited about something, he'll either send me huge blocks of text that take 5 minutes to read or if we talk face to face he'll talk about cars, Yu-Gi-Oh, Dragon Ball, sports, or whatever game he's playing at the time for nearly 30 minutes barely pausing to breathe. Most of the time I can't get a word in, but it doesn't bother me anyway. And by the end of him talking, he always says, Sorry, I'm rambling again. Every time I assure him that I love hearing him talk about things he's interested in, I may not understand some of it, but I still love hearing him get excited over his favorite things. Story 6. He takes care of me way more than he has to. He pushes me to better myself, in a good way. When he gets sleepy, he gets this cute little baby voice mixed with his accent, and then he cuddles into me and it's the cutest thing ever. That and stolen slow kisses. Now I really miss him. Story 7. He is the best human I've ever met, hands down. He helps everyone, whether it's just holding a door or spending hours on the phone with a friend who needs him. He's hilarious, but also knows when to be serious. He always listens. Even if he doesn't know what to say, you can tell he actually understands. He's so incredibly smart, but always is ready to learn more things, whether it's about his interests or mine. Also, he's hot, so that's nice too. Story 8. He's just sweet. He cuddles with a kiddo, he helps those around him, he goes above and beyond all the time, and he always wished me a good morning and a good evening and a good weekend every day we worked together when we first met. He always used my name. It was like a seduction by kindness. He's affectionate and open and breaks the mold for bad masculine stereotypes while still retaining some of the good ones, like walking me to the car and opening my door. I remember my last act said scornfully, Yeah, go ahead and ask the next guy to say nice things and see how that works for you. Well, I don't have to ask that. Because my fella is generous to a fault. He makes me strive to be a better person and a better partner every day. Story 9. I never feel insecure with him. He is extremely reliable. He's never stood me up or bailed on me. He shows up to plans on time. He genuinely cares about my well-being. He's very kind, funny, smart, and he loves my cats. I love watching him do his hobbies and work on his passions. I'm a jack of all trades and he's a master of few. Passions aren't really my thing, but it's something that amazes me when other people have it. He's creative and logical, so that's more than one thing. Story 10. He's absolutely amazing. He's always patient and kind and is always concerned about how I'm feeling. There's no one I love more. He also has great taste in music and is very romantic. Always saying sweet things, complimenting me, just making sure that I know that I'm the love of his life. He also has this really cute habit of never closing cupboard doors. So we have this routine every morning where he gets up first and makes breakfast. And I get up about 30 minutes later, make my breakfast. And as I'm making it, go around and close the cupboard doors. You are lucky to have such a person in your life. Story 11. I adore his dumb jokes. The way he thinks just astounds me on so many levels. From how he can just whip out D&D ideas to his encyclopedic knowledge of some of the most random things, that brain power gets used for jokes and puns and terrible wordplay that manages to wiggle its way into any conversation or any pause between conversations. And they're so bad. I mean, they're clever, but they're terrible in that perfect terrible pun sort of way. And I love every single one that comes out of his dumb, beautiful brain.
story 12. He could have settled, but did not. He grew up in a poor area in a trailer home, where people for generations grew up and never leave. He could have stayed, got a job that pays next to nothing, stayed with his mega-Christian ex-girlfriend. He did not. He found every scholarship he could, applied for every loan, worked full-time, and got his college degree. He left the town to start fresh and change everything. Now he has a house, a great job, a dog, and me, of course. He always brushes it off like it was nothing, but I can't imagine the strength it took to break free of the generational cycle. His brother continued the cycle despite the help offered. Story 13. Even though he struggles to get his life together, he's always supporting me to follow my own dreams. We've been together for 10 years, going on 11. We've lived together for the last four. His family has had a lot of different setbacks despite being pretty well off that have made going to school pretty hard. His mental health isn't the best either. I'll leave his physical health out of the discussion entirely, but he's basically a collection of medical problems shambling around in a very, very pretty skin suit. There have been times where I've had to literally put him back together because of severe joint problems. Through all this, he supported me through graduate school by working his ass off at a soul-sucking hole of a sandwich shop, which he finally quit last year when I got my first real job. I never would have had the guts to enter this field, psychology, counseling, and social work, without his support. My family kept pushing the doctor and vet routes because I loved science and biology as a kid. It was always so hard for me to speak up for myself. Growing up, it always felt like I had to do everything perfectly to justify my own existence. If I wasn't exceptional at anything I was involved with, there was a problem. They wanted spotlights, solos, and founding a nonprofit when I was 16 to 17. I'm 60% sure I developed an autoimmune disorder from the stress. I couldn't be flawed. I couldn't let the cracks show. Anything that wasn't 100% positive emotion was overreacting, so I couldn't trust my own feelings. My parents weren't bad by any means. They had their own hang-ups from childhood, and I think they overcorrected with me because I'm the oldest. But it was important for me to have someone I can be vulnerable and flawed with. He's also very attractive, and this is great when we do have it. But I don't have any other experiences to compare to. I'd never actually been attracted to another person before on this level. I thought people, both guys and girls, were cute. But I had never met someone I had such powerful chemistry with before. Even before we were dating, it was palpable, and all our friends knew we were going to at least go out for a while. Story 14. He always makes sure I'm smiling and that I'm okay. He asks whether I've eaten breakfast. Most of the time, I forget to eat because I'm so busy with school and stuff. He's on the basketball team and eats a lot more than I do. He has an amazing smile. He's lovely to me and my parents. He's also very kind to my grandmother. My grandmother is 99, and he is her favorite boyfriend of mine that she's met. When it was Valentine's Day, he got me a single red rose and lint chocolates. Whenever I'm sad because of my toxic ex-friends, he comes over and we watch the Netflix shows we always watch together. We've been dating for nearly a year, and I love him very much. We were born four months apart. It was just turned 16, and I'm turning 16 in three months. It's exciting for both of us, as we're graduating high school late next year. Happy one-year anniversary in advance. And in high school, too, that sounds like something really special. Story 15. He has been through some very dark stuff, like losing most of his immediate family one after another to tragic circumstances. He has every right to be angry and bitter. Instead, he chooses to be happy, makes jokes, plays the clown. He's a lot better prepared emotionally than I am if things ever go horribly wrong. I appreciate that strength. Pass my appreciation to your significant other. It takes guts and lots of mental strength to go through it with a straight face and a clear mind. Story 16. Since we got together, I always tease him. You're the sweetest boy I've ever met. And after 12 years of marriage, he still is. He's just kind. He's always willing to help people, whether it's a family member, a friend, or a total stranger. He's not a pushover. He just genuinely wants to help people. He's always been this way. He'll do little things like taking my car and filling it up with gas and not even saying anything. I'll just discover it when I get in the car. When I used to have to get up for work at 4 a.m., he'd sneak outside while I was getting ready, warm up the car, and put a coffee cup in it. And he's appreciative of things I do, too. He tells me thank you all the time, even the smallest things. One time, I took the garbage out, and he saw me doing it on the doorbell cam and texted me thanks. He literally tells me, I appreciate you. He does stuff like brag about me to his friends. It's so cute. Then, three years ago, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, and he's been incredible ever since. He's been with me through getting sick, being in agonizing pain, being on medication that made me swell up like a balloon. Medication that made my hair fall out. Not completely, and I have a ton of hair, so it's not super noticeable. But it's devastating to me. And all he wanted was for me to get better. Now, since I'm at a higher risk with coronavirus, he's doing all the grocery shopping. He doesn't want me going out and doing it. He gets supplies for my elderly mom and drops them off at her house. He drops off supplies for his parents. He'll be like, let's FaceTime your mom so she's not so lonely. He's just wonderful. Story 17. How he rambles on and on about car parts and other car things. 
He's a mechanic and a rally driver, and half the time I can't understand a word of it, but it's so cute when he gets all excited or tries to teach me useful stuff. I also like watching him drive. Story 18. He listens. Actually listens. When I ramble on about my day, he listens, asks questions, laughs at the funny parts, and follows up the next day. He knows the names of the students who drive me crazy, though he sometimes sides with the students. He's just the best listener I've ever met. Story 19. He really wants to take care of me, mentally and physically. It's amazing to be supported and to have someone that focused on making sure I'm happy. I absolutely love it. On top of that, he makes me feel really beautiful. With past relationships, I never felt quite this way. I catch glimpses of myself in the mirror lately and I catch myself thinking, damn, I look cute. And I haven't felt that way in a long time. He makes me feel so good about myself. So even when he's not around, I notice that for days after we spend time together, I like myself more. I like how my body looks more, how my face looks without makeup, stuff like that. It's such a wonderful feeling. Story 20. When we first met, he told me he didn't really like cats, which was a bit of a bummer because I'm a cat person. Even so, when we got our own place, he said absolutely my childhood cat goes with us. He wouldn't dream of separating us. We have since gone two more and he's absolutely a cat person, even if he still won't admit it. All three of them adore him, and he adores them right back. It's really heartwarming to see him pick up and cradle and cue the kitten. He so obviously adores her. He's worried that he's going to be a bad dad whenever we get around to having children, but I'm completely confident he'll be amazing. There really is a loving, caring, soft-hearted kind man under his gruff appearance. Story 21 No matter how long it's been since I've seen him, he's always excited to see me. His face lights up and he wraps himself around me until I tell him to let go, but even then he still whines about it. Plus, he tells hilarious puns even when I roll my eyes at him. That's the best part, rolling your eyes, the reasons for his puns. Story 22 He's a total dork. We both admit this, but he can rap with Crazy Bone and DMX like the best of them. It's the cutest thing watching him act like a thug for four minutes. Story 23 We can mess around without getting offended. We call each other some rude names that look terrible to outsiders, but it's all in good fun. We can also call each other bro without it being weird. Story 24 He's so freaking sweet. When I first started hanging out in his room just as friends, we'd sit on his bed and sometimes I'd fake gasp or faint and fall backwards toward the door, of course planning to catch myself. He'd always catch me. One time he threw a pillow at me. I said, ow, and he immediately asked if I was okay. He's just so freaking adorable. Gives the best hugs, plays league with me even though he hates the game. Knows so much about things I don't. It is overall such a great person. I'd love to have a friend like him even if we weren't dating, but of course I prefer it this way. Just wish he'd let me pay more, because I'm starting to feel really, really guilty about it. This is far more than one thing now, but he's so honest. He hasn't said I love you yet, we haven't dated for long, because he thinks it isn't like that yet, but he says, you make me happy and you make me smile. It's nice to hear that, because that's enough for now, and I'd rather hear a real assessment of how he feels than something fake and pretty. Also, when I'm busy with studying RSOs, he's very supportive about me not having time to see him. One week when we're both free, I saw him for hours every single day, and we'd just hug forever. I'd get up to leave because it was getting late, and he'd pull me back down. I'd get all the way to the door and open it, and he'd pull me back in and close the door. It's nice to know that you're wanted, especially because we normally don't have much time to see each other, and I'm honestly a pretty insecure person. I just like pretty much everything about him, and wish we weren't on lockdown so I could see him again. Story 25 The night before, he grabbed a baked potato and just bit into it whole. No butter or cheese or anything. Then he did some dance in front of me while I was on the couch and accidentally dropped a bunch of potato crumbs on me. He really is my bae. If I had to sum it all up to one thing, I really couldn't decide because he's just so good to me. So I'll stick with that recent one. Honestly, this is my favorite one so far. Having stupid little moments like this is one of the best feelings ever. Take care of your guy. Story 26. His smile when he gets an earnest compliment or when he squeals when he sees something cute. Eight years and I still find it completely adorable. Story 27. She's the first person that made me feel like I'm worth something. It just feels incredible. The moment you realize that you may be of use or significant to someone, a new fire lights up inside of you. The dormant passions lights up. Life gets a whole new meaning and there's a gush of energy running through your body. Love this feeling. Story 28. He's just the sweetest. He insists he isn't very sensitive or sweet, but he's very aware of my feelings. Like apologizing for harmless jokes. So cute. That and he's so cuddly. Story 29. God, I think it'd be easier to ask what I don't adore about him. I like how soft he is with me, if that makes sense. He holds my hand gently, rubs my arm, tells me I'm cute every couple of minutes. He makes me feel like a kin. Story 30. Just him in general. I just absolutely love all of what he is. Are there small flaws we all have? 
Yeah, no one is perfect or everything would be boring. But the way he smiles, the way he gets embarrassed, the way he looks down and pouts when he doesn't want to admit something, the times he's always thinking about my feelings and thoughts about things rather than whether they are important in the matter or not, or how he will burst into a laugh and try to hold it in when I make a funny comment in a super serious moment. He's so respectful towards everyone, and I absolutely love my darling. He's everything and so much more I could have ever dreamed for. Story 31. He's really good at verbally making me feel better when I'm having a bad day. I'm also always amazed at how supportive he is with my future career plans, like if I'd have to move away for school, be okay with having a long-distance relationship. I also really appreciate his random I love your reminders when we're together. I can't get enough of hearing it from him. Story 32. He has no sense of direction. He has done so many things in life. He has traveled the world, he can speak six languages, but he gets lost going from his house to mine. It's five turns in less than two miles. I think it is the most adorable thing in the world. I love him so much. Story 33. I love when he gets super excited about new projects or hobbies. He really gets into things, to the point where he'd start researching said things for hours a day, for months, the next thing you know he's already an expert. At least in a non-expert's eye, I'm not an expert in any of the things he's pursued, and he can talk about whatever it is for hours if you don't stop him. The amount of knowledge he can pack into his brain is incredible. It just amazes me. He's a man who cannot miss a single moment in life. Also, the way he defends himself when we play fight, he balls up and turns into a turtle. It's adorable. He knows I can take him down. Story 34. He is so much more than I could have ever hoped for. He's an amazing cook, and he helps me with the handy stuff around the house. He loves snuggles as much as I do, and loves our cat. He wants to share his hobbies with me, and I love sharing mine with him. We have so many laughs together, and fits of giggling because we're both so in love with each other. Every day when he comes home, I am giddy. He communicates with me when things get hard, and we talk through any issues that come up. The openness we have is so crucial to a relationship, and he's here for me. If I'm having a tough day, he gives me space, and then comes to check on me and talks me through it. I do the same for him when needed. We didn't know at first how to help the other or do what they needed. That took time and discussion, but we learned together and now know how to help each other. He's taller than I am. I'm already 5'10", and he has gorgeous curly red hair and beautiful blue eyes. His smile knocks me off my feet, and his eyes are incredibly kind. He tells me I'm beautiful and I love when he touches me. He pulls me close for a kiss and I melt. He loves listening to me sing in the car and will turn up the songs he knows I love so I can sing them louder. He loves my laugh and when I lay my head on his neck. We snuggle up before sleep and snuggle when we wake up. When we started dating, I finally really understood what love was. It was such an odd epiphany. Like, ooh, this is what that feels like. And I just knew. He was absolutely made for me. And every minute I spend with him is the best minute of my life. Relationships aren't easy. But everything life has to throw our way, I want to do with him. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out this next video. The YouTube algorithm really thinks you like it.